Merdain was a lesser deity of the Erore, which is the pantheon of deities of Jomda. She was the lady of pragmatic thought, not to be confused with Openser, also of the Aurora, who was the Lord of Reason. The difference is a matter of confusion for sages today, but at the time when Jomdath was founded, it was clear. Openser stood for organized, precise thought, uh, understanding the world around you by clear definitions and observations, and making logical order, such as systems of justice and schools of study from the results. Whereas Merdain was the champion of, let me, a mortal, figure out the right answer to this personal pressing problem and of deduction, the if this, then this. One of her nicknames was the Lady of Conclusions. She is still revered by some sages as the champion and most skilled proponent of what we real world moderns call the deductive method. She could readily do the astound Watson, Sherlock Holmesian, Ah, a retired potter, I perceive, but lately returned from Chacenta, and now down on his luck. Merdain is depicted as a nine-foot tall, thin and muscular, light brown-skinned woman with long, graceful hands, a long and slender face, high cheekbones, and having large eyes with a riveting gaze, dark brows, and a long mane, ponytail, uh, of rich reddish black hair. So, a lock of hair in that rare hue is often used as a touchstone or keepsake by those who revere her or want her aid when they have to think something through. She is usually seen as going barefoot and wearing ankle length simple robes, usually of a hue of copper, orange, or ochre. Her clergy, the Merdanar, affectionately called her Lady Thought, and often addressed her so in prayer. Her holy or temple symbol was a chevron shape, that's sort of like Superman's chest shield, chevron shaped, group of three side-on black interlocked hogs or gears, toothed wheels, big top wheel interlocked with a medium middle wheel that's interlocked with a small bottom wheel, all on a field of gold. Her sacred hue was royal purple, with gold as the accent or trim hue. Merdanar wore royal purple robes edge trimmed with gilded thread, or tabards of the same hue over work clothes if they had to work both adorned back and breast with the holy symbol of the goddess. If an altar to Mordain was erected indoors, it was flanked by two braziers, in which cinnamon was sprinkled when lit to scent the flames, covered with a purple cloth adorned with the holy symbol, but backed by a royal purple wall tapestry that never bore the holy symbol of Mordain, but instead was adorned with two horizontal black eyebrows that curved down at their innermost points where they almost touched, but curled upwards at their outer ends. Indoors, to reverence the goddess, Merdanar went barefoot. Lay worshippers desiring to pray and give offerings at the main innermost altar rather than in an outer room before lesser clergy, were instructed to remove footwear and enter the sanctuary barefoot. In Jomdath, Merdain's temples and shrines all took the same shape, two massive, thick, cylindrical pillars framing a wide open entrance and supporting an upturned at the corner's roof that sloped lower as it stretched away from the entrance. Shrines went back only a little way, having a forerooom or cloakroom, then sleeping quarters facing a garter robe, then a robing room facing vestment storage, and finally an altar at the back. Temples might go back a long way, curving to left or right like a beast's tail into long complexes of rooms. Typical offerings to Merdain consisted of a few coins, a little raw or unprepared food, and a written poem or song lyric or prayer. The best writings reasoned out a conclusion to something, often following a model akin to, a wet cloth laid on a rock in the moonlight is still wet come dawn, but a wet cloth laid on a rock under the sun is often dry by sunset, so the sun is thirsty and the moon is not. If you're enjoying this video, please like it, subscribe, and if you want to be notified whenever I've got a new video, please hit the bell icon. And if you want a steady stream of Realms lore, join my Patreon, Ed Greenwood on Patreon, and consider becoming 
a protector of the realms. I'd love it. Your support makes these videos possible. Verdaner were considered help practical clergy of the people, daily useful rather than haughty or exalted. Within the church, Merdain's teachings to her holiest, capital H, holiest, which are just a collective term for her senior clergy, were to use reasoning to solve problems high and low as advisors and as doers, and never as rulers or power seekers. Most upper priests of Merdain were women, and they put great store in deduction, challenges, and the gathering of information to reason defenses against those challenges or refinements of the challenges to arrive at a trusted core of truth all sides could accept that was dubbed Merdance, which means blessed by Merdain. Common games of informal entertainment among them, and when clergy instructed laity, children in particular, were what am I? Deduction games where questions had to be answered honestly, but the answerer tried to do so in a way that was cryptic while the questioner sought to reach the correct answer in as few queries as possible by careful phrasing. In battle, Merdain fought with a double-ended spear, both ends being spiked balls from which protruded a sword blade. This weapon was known as murder, the two-edged sword and lightnings played along it only when the goddess wielded, paining her even as they seared any foe. So she often moaned and groaned in pain as she fought, which was seldom, though she would come to Helm's side whenever he was beset. Helm and Merdain were lovers. Their lovemaking was aerial, flying swiftly about, and all was done when the god was helmed and armored, but Merdain wore only, quote, naught but her head tail, meaning the ponytail. Clergy of Merdain always tried to catch at least a glimpse of the two deities at love, for they believed that doing so brought them closer to Merdain's way, and that was a phrase amongst them, Merdain's way of thought, so they could reason more wisely and keenly. Lady Thought perished in the dawn cataclysm, drowned by her older sister Umberly, who loved her not, her passing indirectly caused by Lysander, as Merdain was the lover of the god Helm, and they often worked together to help Helm identify intruders and foes before such acted openly to try to pass him, the Vigilant One has regarded the Morning Lord with disfavor ever since. Among Merdanar, this is always referred to as the passing, and those lower clergy who did not perish with their goddess, I say this because all of her holiest drowned alive, seawater gushing from their mouths and noses and entirely filling their bodies, even if they were great distances from any sea at the time of the death of their goddess, were filled with the same compulsion. They were to join Helm's clergy as novices, but bring their reason to his service and to his church so that no guardian should be easily tricked or deceived. And they did that, the one church subsuming the other. And welcome back to Realm Speak. This time around, it's a twofer. We're doing these. Bahamut, the Platinum Dragon, or Bahamut, or Bahamut. You see, this is one of these places where where you come from in the realms determines your vowel sounds and the emphasis or emphasis you place on a word, or your syllables or syllables where they are in a name. So we have Bahamut. And then we have Baphomet, or Baphomet, or Baphomet, or Baphomet. Again, it depends on where you are in the realms. But if you're speaking to a traveling merchant who uses the common tug, and you say Bahamut for the dragon, or Baphomet, or Baphomet for the other creature, you are not going to be misunderstood. They're going to know who you're talking about. They're also going to probably look over their shoulders because you're mentioning names that perhaps shouldn't be just mentioned unless you want a visit perhaps an unwelcome visit so it's better to say you know that that big nice dragon the platinum one there y y you know that um demon devil weird other thing yeah the b one the big b or okay we are now assuming that common tongue is a direct analog with english and its script but Let's do that. It might keep you alive. 